Judd, it's pretty fair to say that in the six years or so that you and I have been doing a show together and talking Vikings together, one of our favorite things to do is to is to rank things. Yes, is that fair to say? absolutely. Like just, yes, we, pecking we orders. Things. We like to rank. Yes. Yes, we'll rank random things, and we will rank things like quarterbacks, which is what we're going to do mm-hmm. on today's episode here. And this all kind of started with you got Chris Sims came out last week on Pro Football Talk and had Kirk Cousins as like the 13th best quarterback in the NFL. And if you go off of like Pro Football Focus rankings, Kirk Cousins was top five in a lot of key categories. And so part of this exercise is. One through 32, let's get a lay of the land of what the quarterback landscape looks like. And the most important thing for this show, where does Kirk Cousins rank? How many quarterbacks can you definitively say are better than him right now in the NFL? So unlike our Kirk or Blank series where we compare Kirk and his contract to other quarterbacks, this is just a straight up talent evaluation and and any other intangibles you'd want to throw in. But this doesn't have anything to do with contract. Right. So we're going to remove contracts from the equation. We're going to remove like a three-year, five-year window. It's just right now, who are the best quarterbacks, one through 32. And uh, I believe we actually have a fancy high-level graphic for my – I'd like to just start us off because we've got this amazing graphic. Sure. If we could cue up the graphic and some films music, this is great. We're taking our production to another – look at this. Oh, boy. Look at this right here. I mean, we spent hours on this graphic, just so all you guys know. That is beautiful. So let's start. let's start at the bottom. Mitch Trubisky, Baker Mayfield, Sam Darnold, Gardner Minshew, all guys who still have a lot to prove, are still young, Mm -hmm. and are still very new to the NFL. Um, Of those four guys at the bottom, I think Mitch Trubisky is a train wreck. I don't think he becomes a long-term starting quarterback. I think Baker Mayfield has a lot of – I think he's – I think Baker Mayfield is the most talented guy among these Oh, and you gave the Bears two starters. I did. Correct. Yes. This is – this is one through thirty-two. Okay. And I gave, and you'll see, I gave the Cowboys a couple as well. Okay. So there's a couple, there's a couple teams that don't have one of the thirty-two best quarterbacks in the NFL right now. All right. Just for just for clarification, you can rank them if you want to do one through thirty-two based on yeah, the quarterback I, I went by starters. That's cool. Yep. And that's cool too. Um, and so Mitch, I think Baker Mayfield has a chance to uh, to ascend this list, but he's just he's a bad leader. He blames other people. He gets in feuds with talking heads on ESPN. So I'm I'm out of Baker Mayfield right sure. now. Sure. Uh, the next tier, Jameis Winston, if you look at his upside, if it was just quarterback upside rankings and what they can do when they're playing at their best, mm-hmm. he might be top 10 legitimately, like arm talent, ability to go off and throw three or four touchdowns. But he's also one of the more shipwreck a game quarterbacks in the NFL. So that's why he's 28th right now. Nick Foles, if you if you took Nick Foles Philadelphia version, he'd be way higher on this list. But Nick Foles outside of Philadelphia, mostly a disaster. So he's 27th. Um, a couple other young guys, Drew Locke, Josh Allen, Andy Dalton is going to wind up being just a career journeyman backup for, from this point forward. Daniel Jones, probably the most promising of 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 his class, I think, from last year. Mm-hmm. Jacoby Brissett, one of the more underrated quarterbacks in the NFL and also got replaced by Phillip Rivers. So um, he's going to be somebody to watch maybe either after Phillip Rivers is done or maybe with another team and comes from the Tom Brady Bill Belichick, Josh McDaniels tree as well. Sure. Jared Jared Goff, 21st for me, one of the most highly paid quarterbacks, but just feels like you could plug anyone into that system and they would perform at or near the level of Jared Goff. Kyler Murray, mobility, showed some comeback prowess down the stretch too, Derek Carr. Um, I love me some Phillip Rivers. You probably mm-hmm. think I've got him too high at 17. And Cam Newton, uh, or I'm sorry, 18 Phillip Rivers. Cam Newton at 17, um, if he's healthy, I mean, that's the big if, if he's right. not healthy, he's not on this list. And so I'm, I'm, I'm Correct. So I'm envisioning healthy signed Cam Newton mm-hmm. as 17 on my list. All right. Ryan Tannehill, 16 pro football focus had him number one in 2019, Ugh. which is amazing. He had a good year, but I'm not ready to go all in on Ryan Tannehill. Number 15, Jimmy Garoppolo. Um, you think about Jimmy Garoppolo and like how old he is and he's been around the league for five or six years, but he doesn't really have that many starts under his belt relative to most guys who are that age. Right. Cause he's been a backup to Tom Brady and he got injured. And so I think he has room to grow if he just gets more starts under his belt. I'm bullish on Teddy at 14. If Teddy stays healthy, I think he's for sure a top 15 quarterback. 
He's very Alex Smith-like, and that he's not going to lose you games very often. The question is, what can he do at his at his peak? Mm-hmm. You know, how how good can he be if you're if you're telling him, look, man, we need you to throw the ball 50 times today and sling it around. We haven't seen a lot of that with him in his career to this point. Matt Ryan, 13. People kind of forget about Matt Ryan, Ben Roethlisberger, because they've been around for a long time. Uh, we've seen them on some mediocre teams, maybe the last couple of years, injury issues with Big Ben. I've got Matt Ryan, 13. Ben Roethlisberger, 12. And Kirk Cousins, number 11, just outside my top 10. And I think it's very debatable. Like this stack of quarterbacks, I think you can debate like a group of eight or 10 guys here. Absolutely. And I've got Kirk Cousins at 11 on the outside of the top 10, just mostly because of lack of clutch performances outside of New Orleans. Like, great. You added one to your list. Need to see more. Um, Primetime, road, good opponents. Like, just stack up some more wins and good performances in those categories, and he instantly shoots up toward the top five. Carson Wentz, 10. He's more mobile. I just, like, it's more of a gut feel thing between mm. Wentz, Stafford, Cousins that, you know, hey, one game tomorrow, who do you pick? And for me, it's Carson Wentz. But if Kirk if Kirk Cousins wins a big game in primetime, I reserve the right to put him ahead of Carson Wentz. Matt Stafford, number nine. Tom Brady, I still have at number eight because he's Tom bleeping Brady, for God's sakes. Mm-hmm. Dak Prescott, seven, I think, with upside to get into the top five. Deshaun Watson at six with upside to get into the top five. Aaron Rodgers, even though he's not the same guy he used to be, he would have been number one on this list four or five years ago. He's still top five for me. Lamar Jackson, Drew Brees. I don't know like what all the Drew Brees hate other than like his ignorant <laughs> comments from a few weeks ago. His like, age. Yeah. He completed like 75% no, I mean, of his that's, passes that's why. last year. It comes down to age. It's ridiculous. Yep. So he's number um, – until until age slaps him in the face, he's number three on my list. Okay. Russell Wilson, number two, and Pat Mahomes, number one. That is my ranking. Cousins, 11, Mahomes, Wilson, Breeze, Jackson, Rogers in the top five. So I'll go back to what I said last week in starting to go through this exercise, and I think it still holds true. I really think once you get past the top six, it becomes – it's a crapshoot. Like that next list of guys definitely belongs there, but I don't know how. And and if you were to come and tell me Matt Stafford, Carson Wentz, and Tannehill are going to have awful 2020s, are you shocked? I'd say not really. I'm a little surprised, yeah. but not sh- – now, if you came and said Pat Mahomes and Russell Wilson and Lamar Jackson are going to fall off the table, I would say I don't think so, right? But, Phil, I think really once you get to me past Deshaun Watson on your list, there's nobody who you could say, hey, that guy is going to be great or he's going to be awful. And I would say you are absolutely positively wrong. Yeah, actually, let's go down that path here. On this list, how many of these guys would you be shocked if they just like fell off the cliff and had a disaster, like a Brett Favre 2010 season where they just threw a ton of interceptions and were just, you know. Mahomes shocked, Wilson shocked, Breeze because of age, you probably can't be too shocked, I guess. So Lamar Jackson, but again, like if, I don't know if Lamar Jackson needs to prove it another year too. Agreed with that. I would still be pretty shocked, I guess. Deshaun Watson, I'd be shocked. I actually, I I think, I think a lot of Dak Prescott, I would be shocked if if Dak Prescott did. Okay. But after that, other than that, Tom Brady, like, you know, Tom Brady is a disaster. I'd be like, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. see that coming. Yeah, right. Exactly. Stafford. Uh, yeah, I could see it. Stafford's pretty consistent. I, I, I guess I wouldn't be entirely. But it's shocked. Detroit. His head coach <laughs> Patricia. I mean, he might throw seventy-four picks just despite the dumb sob. You know. <laughs> yeah, some of these other guys. I mean, Teddy. We just, you know, obviously we just need to see more of Teddy post injury as a starter. So, yeah, Philip Rivers. We've seen him in disaster mode. Derek Carr. We've seen him in disaster mode. Jared Goff. Hey, Phil. Like, Phil, from twenty-five down on on. Your list. Give me your best bet from 25 to 32 to have a surprisingly good season. Um. So from 25 to 32, my so Drew list is, is Drew Locke, Josh Allen, Nick Foles, Jameis Winston, Gardner Minshew, Sam Darnold, Baker Mayfield, and Mitch Trubisky. Uh-huh. I would probably, as much as I don't like him, I think probably Baker Mayfield because Kevin Stefanski, if Kevin Stefanski is a legitimate NFL head coach. If he takes all the qualities we've seen from him as an assistant for 15 years with the Vikings, that calm, stoic, but also respected demeanor and a guy who's wildly smart offensively, if he can connect his personality and expertise into Baker Mayfield, 
Baker Mayfield could take off. I don't think Baker Mayfield's ever going to be a top five quarterback, but he could take off and and jump much higher than 31 on my list. How about Darnold? That's who I'm curious about. I, I, who's he throwing to? He looks like he like the guy's got bedhead every but, time. But he we plays, judge. Like, he but, looks like he, but 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 stop there. We judge him, or at least personally, I do. Based on I'm seeing ghosts that that quote d- during the course of the Monday night game last year and the look, because you're right. Sam Darnold looks like a goofy guy and I partially judge him, him on. Well, he he must be a goofball, which he might not be. Um, I think we might have assumptions about Darnold that aren't fair, where the flip side is, I think our assumptions about Baker are more and more by the day and by the game often confirmed, if that makes sure. sense. The, the, the only thing I would say about Sam Darnold is his interception his interception totals have been a problem in college and in the NFL. He's not a very accurate thrower. And I just don't know, unless, unless you've got a big target, like if you've got Randy Moss or you've got Julio Jones and you don't have to be precisely accurate because those guys are just going to go up and get the ball. Calvin Johnson back in the day, right? You know, he, like, who, who is he throwing to? If he's not accurate and and if he doesn't have great infrastructure around him, I would just be a little bit worried about that. If you plopped him into a different infrastructure, I might answer differently. Okay. The other guy, speaking of infrastructure, Jameis Winston, if there is an infrastructure that could knock some of those interceptions out of his game, maybe <laughs> it's sitting, sitting, sitting behind Drew Brees. Dude, it was 30. I know. I mean, if it was like 18, I'd be like, you know what? Phil might be right. He <laughs> threw 30 picks with Bruce Arians, who is a good offensive coach. I don't think there's, I don't think there's, aware, I don't think there's hope. I don't think there's hope there. I really don't. 30 picks in 2019, it's damn near impossible. All right, so what are your uh, – I think I'm the only one that uh, that brought a flashy graphic to the table here. So we can probably jump into Judd's here. And why don't you go, why don't you go through yours All right. and let's see where the biggest differences are and where Kirk Cousins falls. All right, do you want me to go from the bottom? And by the way, I ranked um, starting my potential starting QBs. So I didn't go just – QB. So no Cam Newton for me, no Jacoby Brissett. So I just went 32 potential starting quarterbacks for 2020. Sure. So my top, my, my 25 to 32 are Gardner Minshew, Drew Locke, Daniel Jones, Joe Burrow, Tua, who I attached to Fitzpatrick. So Tua could sky rocket up this list very quickly. 30 for me, Foles, Trubisky, because as long as you tell me that Trubisky has a chance to start, I'm sinking your ranking. Sorry. I don't care what the Bears say about it's going to be different. No, it's not. Mitch Trubisky stinks. He will always stink. As we've talked about a thousand times on this show, we all saw Christian Ponder. Trubisky is Ponder. 2.0. That's not going to change no matter how much you tell me. 31 on my list is Dwayne Haskins. 32, Jarrett Stidham the Patriots starter who I think is going to be a disaster. And I think it's going to be brilliant because I think that disaster is going to drag the Patriots right down into the crapper for a season and get them a very high draft pick. Bill Belichick is smarter than you. He's smarter than me. He's smarter than Declan. We all can say Belichick would never do this. Belichick will do whatever Belichick wants. So those are my 25 to 32. Phil Mackey. All right. Uh, My 20, my 20 to 24. Are unfortunately, Phil. I hate to say it, your guy, Philip Rivers is twenty. Oh, I thought I thought you were going Cousins at twenty. Yeah, there no, 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 no. In fact, you are going to be shocked at where Kirk Cousins is on my list. Rivers at twenty. Josh Allen at twenty-one. I've been giving this thought because I've been so bored of of late. Besides my foray <laughs> into watching EPL, you know what? Stefan Diggs might find out. Stefan Diggs might find out the very lesson that a friend of this show, at least he was Super Bowl week, the year it was here, found out. Greg Jennings found out I can be as good as any receiver out there. But you know what happens if I don't have a decent QB? I'm sunk. I'm really curious to see the first time that Stefan Diggs, who clearly grew tired of Kirk Cousins not finding him deep. And I don't blame Diggs for that. But the first time that he steps into a huddle with Josh. And finds out, oh my God, this guy has got no fastball at all as far as quarterback competency. I think Stefan Diggs might find out exactly what Greg did, which is the devil you know is better than the devil you don't know. Josh <laughs> Allen at 20. Uh, at um, I'm sorry, 21. 22, Tyrod Taylor. 23, higher than you, but with the same fears, 
Baker Mayfield, and 24, Sam Darnold, who I'm curious about, but until I see more, I can't I can't have him in the yeah. teens. He is in my 20s. And I will admit, like, I, I, I have Baker Mayfield 31st, and that is mostly due to his personality and his just complete inability to focus on what matters. But I think those things are really important for a quarterback. Sure. So. Agreed completely. 15 to 19 in my quarterback ranking list of the 32 uh, starting quarterbacks I expect to see on opening day 2020. 15, Jimmy Garoppolo. I like him, but I don't love him. 16. Yeah, we both have him. We both have him at the exact same place. 16, yeah. Derek Carr, who, by the way, I think might still be good, but I'm not quite sure yet. 17, Declan's guy, Teddy, who I hope he does great. I hope he bounces back now, full time starter, and, and fulfills the expectations that we had before his leg broke here but you just don't know yet. So I've got uh, Teddy at 17. Roethlisberger at 18, because I think he's now cooked. He's just a big guy. The wear and tear, he's hurt a lot. Yeah. He 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 was at one time a guy, for all his personal faults, that I would have installed as my quarterback, but those times are just now done. And 19, a guy I don't know about Jared Goff. I don't know if Jared Goff's sort of good, not sort of good. I can't decide there. So un until he pops back up with uh, Sean McVay as his coach, Jared Goff is 19 on my quarterback list. And of course, while you try to figure that out, you have to pay the guy $32 yeah. million oh. dollars a year while you're trying to figure, is he, is he good? Like, wouldn't you rather have a guy who makes $8 million on a rookie contract while you figure out the guy? I'm exactly so. Number 10 through uh, number 14 on my list. And this is where you're going to be shocked at where my guy, our guy, Kirk Cousins, lands. 10, Matthew Stafford. When healthy, still very good. I debated this greatly. 10 is Stafford. 12, I'm going to skip here, is Brady. 13, Carson Wentz. 14, because I have to see this again at least once, if not twice more, to, to put him as a top 10 quarterback full-time, Ryan Tannehill. And that's right, Phil Mackey and I, independent of each other completely, never looking at each other's list in doing this exercise, have Kirk Cousins in the exact same place. In my in my case, oh, he's, wow. he's he is sandwiched between Stafford and Brady. Ta uh, Kirk Cousins, number 11. We have him through independent wow. rankings at the exact same spot, Phil Mackey. That's amazing. So, so all right, be honest. What part of your exercise was, ah, I just don't think he's a top 10 quarterback, therefore I can't put him in? Because mine wasn't that at all. Mine was very objective. Like, I knew who my, I knew Mahomes, Wilson, Lamar Jackson, Breeze, Rodgers. Like, I knew there was like five or six guys for sure at the top. Yep. And then from there, it was kind of like from Tom Brady to Stafford to Wentz. Like, it's that group I'm trying to sort out. Yep. Um, so, but like, if you were to t if if you were to come in here and say, no, Kirk has to be eighth or ninth ahead of Stafford, Wentz, Brady, etc. on yep. my list, I wouldn't really die on that hill. I'd say, yeah, I agree. If right now, if if you're gonna say like Declan has said a couple times on this show that that uh, Kirk Cousins is a better quarterback than Tom Brady right now, I wouldn't fight you too badly on that. I'll take Tom Brady for a game, but I'm not gonna die on that hill for a 43 year old Tom Brady. So, a a yeah. year ago, I would have. I would have told you that Kirk Cousins is in the high teens, but I will die on the hill of not putting him top 10. And then, you know what, statistically, in playoff game, one playoff game, he played pretty damn well, right? Yeah. So here's how I did this. I started by putting Kirk Cousins at nine, and I played a, a game, a quarterback game, that I like to call I Dare ya. And that game was, I dare you to knock Cousins down. I dare you to do it. Come and do it. And then I started. One. I thought you were gonna. I thought you were gonna play like Crouching Tiger, Hidden Cousins, or something. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I played know. a game called You Knock Him Down. You convince me, okay? All right. So one, and th this I'm sure is true of everyone's list who does these, and there will be thousands by the time that we get to Opening Day 2020. Patrick Mahomes is one. I put Jackson two, but don't disagree, Phil, with, with your um, choice to put him fourth because you know what? He could come out and be. Pretty good in 2020, but not near the MVP player that he was in 2019. So he can be, he could basically be second to fourth. I put him two for now. I put Russell Wilson three. I put Deshaun Watson four, who I love. 
I put Breeze fifth, Rogers sixth, Dak Prescott seventh, Matt Ro- Matt Ryan. Remembering statistically what he has done, and that I think he's been with the franchise now that for two years has been very questionably run, and I am shocked that Quinn is still their coach. I really thought that he would be fired after 2019, Phil. So in giving Ryan the benefit of the doubt for where he's been, I put him eighth. I put, and this is this is controversial, but I think this kid, this kid is going to skyrocket up this list in 2020. But right now he's ninth on mine, Kyler Murray. I think Kyler Murray is going to be really good. And then, and then in the game of yeah, I, I don't hate that. Yeah. and then in the game of I dare you, I took what Stafford did before he got hurt with a Lions team that is as atrociously run basically as the Browns, and now they're worse. And, and I think that if you looked for in the four major sports that we follow on a daily basis, if you looked for let's say the top five NBA, hockey, baseball, and National Football League incompetent franchises. I think the Lions make that top five. And so I put Stafford 10th because he's still damn good with a support system that, pardon my French, sucks now and has sucked for a while. It popped up, but it's bad. And and so the I dare you was Kyler Murray and Stafford bumped Cousins down to 11th. But a year ago, I would have died on the hill of saying, I can't make Cousins a top 10 QB. And now, Phil, I'm very much with you in saying, you know, if you came back and said, no, he has to be ninth, I'd say, okay, can see it. Yeah. So, all right. I, a couple of final thoughts here in terms of guys who could move the highest after this upcoming season and guys who could drop the lowest. Mm-hmm. Obviously, you could see Drew Brees dropping, could see Tom Brady dropping. Um, I could, I, I, I have Matt Ryan 13th now that you've got him in the top 10. Like, I, I'm probably a little bit too hard on Matt Ryan there. He probably deserves to be above Ben Roethlisberger, but of, of, of guys who could rise the most, I'm with you. I think Kyler Murray, I've got, I've got Kyler 20th on my list just based on his very good rookie season that showed promise. I could see that dude being a bona fide top 10 quarterback after 2000. Yep. After, after this season, yep. I could see, I could see him being a consensus top 10 quarterback for sure. That's the thing. Like guys like Kyler Murray, this is where Kirk cousins run into, runs into some, issues on lists like these is that he just like Kyler Murray ran for 500 yards and a handful of touchdowns last year. Kirk cousins can't do that. So if Kyler Murray becomes a similar passer to cousins and can run for 500 yards and keep plays alive, he just passes cousins on the list. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's, that's where cousins is just going to be limited. When you look at Russell Wilson and Lamar Jackson and Deshaun Watson, like these dudes are mobile and, um, I will say Cousins has benefited from Roethlisberger getting hurt and getting old, Matt Ryan getting hurt and getting old, Andrew Luck retiring, uh, Tom Brady getting old. Like there, there, there's an attrition happening here the last couple of years since Cousins signed with the Vikings. I think the Vikings signed the 14th best quarterback in the NFL, and through attrition, Cousins being pretty good, and and some of these old guard guys moving out of the league, that's how he's able to rise up and become a borderline top 10 quarterback in the NFL right now. Yeah. That's fair. Uh, That's very Declan, fair. Any like Declan, what would you do for for your list? What, yeah. Any any major differences? Wh- who's your top five? Where do you have cousins? And what are some some differences you have? So j- just looking at the list, I I think you guys are both way too high on Carson Wentz and Matt Stafford. Um, I I like Stafford and Cousins. They're very close, and I'll I'll listen to that. I just don't buy Carson Wentz. I, I know he has got a hell of an arm, but the guy has never stayed healthy. I I can't get into the hype until I see it over full 16 game season and into the playoffs. So just for that factor alone, I'd have to have Kirk Cousins above for sure. Carson Wentz. I'd listen to the Stafford one, but I still think Cousins is better than Matthew Stafford. If I'm looking at the top five, yeah, I mean, I'd probably have Mahomes than Jackson as two, but Russell Wilson has the body of work to definitely be as good as as the number two quarterback on on a list like this. And then I I know I said a couple weeks ago that Dak Prescott is someone who I think is high, so I would probably I would probably round out with Dak. So I would go one through five. I would put Mahomes, Jackson, Wilson, uh, Breeze, I guess. I though I think I think he's gonna fall off a cliff in 2020. I really do. He was still really good, like Phil said, uh, this last year. So I, I would probably round it off with Russell Wilson, Lamar Jackson. Obviously, who am I missing here? Deshaun Watson. Deshaun Watson. And Drew Brees, yeah, uh, Dak. Dak Prescott, Dak Prescott. Yeah. So I, I, 
that that's my fumbled way of saying my top five quarterbacks. I would say Mahomes, Jackson, w- Wilson, Rodgers, well, Prescott. There's so many good quarterbacks, man. I can't even rank them right now. This is this is a Rogers hard list, like you said. Top, where, where do you have Cousins? I have Cousins probably as seven or eight. I probably have Cousins as seven Woo! or eight. That's where I'd probably put them. So you got them higher than Wilson. Yeah. But I'm not like I, seven. I'd fight you. Seven. I'd yeah. fight you. Eight. I wouldn't fight you. Okay. I would not fight. Like I would. I would not. Uh, there are seven quarterbacks that I I know for sure are better than Kirk Cousins. Pat Mahomes, Russell Wilson, Drew Brees, Lamar Jackson, Rodgers, Watson, Prescott to me. Yeah. Brady, I think, is better still. The other ones, I am you not dying on a hill. So eight to fourteen, yeah. I wouldn't fight you. It's hard. If if yeah. you put Cousins eighth, I'd be like, eh, I think that's high, but and I can see down to about fourteenth, which I think is is too low. But if you if you had him 14th, I also w- wouldn't say that's crazy. Th- no. This is where I really believe that beyond about four or maybe five names, this exercise is is in pockets, incredibly jumbled, incredibly. There's so pockets of, of mix these guys. OK, that's fine. Mix these guys. Um, and it just it. But it's it speaks to the the um, difficulty of finding a quarterback who you say that is 100% the guy who can do this. So there it is. We uh we did not confer beforehand. We both That's had Cousins as the 11th best quarterback in the NFL. And we'd love to hear from you guys too on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash score north. Drop in, your, in the comment section, do you agree, disagree? Do you think he's top 10? Are we too high on him at 11? Uh, who, who, who are your top 10 quarterbacks in his Kirk Cousins one of them. And that's a wrap on this episode of Purple Daily. Thanks for hanging out with us.